Did you ever ask yourself, given my current set of circumstances, how likely am I to survive the worst of worst case scenarios if it were to happen right now? Well, today on the channel, we're gonna be sharing a system with you that we devised to help you self-assess and identify your strengths and weaknesses. And you're gonna get a score on a scale of zero to 100. This is going to give you a precise measurement of how ready you and your family are to survive the worst of worst case scenarios. And make sure you stick around to the end because I'm gonna be sharing my score at the end of this. So let's get to it. This system that we're gonna share with you today is the basis for a series of ongoing videos that we call Celebrity Survival Scores. Using this measurement tool, we've assessed the survivability of many different celebrities, from Bill Gates to Elon Musk, to Joe Rogan and Andrew Tate. You can go and watch those videos through the link in the description below. But I would encourage you instead to get a piece of paper and grab a pen if you want to, although it's not necessary, and follow along. And feel free to post your score in the comments section below. To help guide us through this self-assessment, we're gonna use a familiar face as a case study, our good friend, Normal C. Norman. Oh, hey man, I, I remember you. You're that guy who always thinks bad stuff's gonna happen. Hey man, nothing bad's ever gonna happen. How are you doing today, Norman? Uh, I can't complain. Are you ready for this? I'm ready to go. Uh, hang on a sec. What are we doing again? Uh, your eyes look a little droopy and you look like you didn't get much sleep last night. I always look like this. So the 10 dimensions that we're gonna be measuring ourselves on are as follows. Resources, geography, gardening, hunting, skills, security, physical fitness, networking, mental health, and finances and resourcefulness. Each of these 10 dimensions, we're gonna rate ourselves on a scale of one to 10 using the following criteria. Number one is resources. One of the cardinal obsessions of preppers is how much food and resources they have stockpiled away. Let's rate this on a scale of zero to 10. If you have less than two weeks worth of food stored in your home at any given moment, you can check zero for this box. On the upper end of the scale, if you have more than two years worth of food stored, that's roughly 1 million calories per year for every member of your family, then you can give yourself a 10 out of 10. The minimum to achieve a score of five out of 10 is at least three months worth of food. Now, to identify where exactly you fall along this spectrum, there's some mitigating factors to consider. What is the quality of your food? Are these high quality, nutrient dense foods which are diverse in nature? Then you can give yourself a slightly higher score. Maybe give yourself an extra point or two. Do you have an ample stockpile of things like medication, ammunition, first aid supplies? How much drinking water do you have on hand? Do you have a means of filtering that drinking water? Do you have different items that you can barter? These are all mitigating factors. I would say our friend Normal C. Norman here certainly has less than two weeks worth of food. But now that I think about it, Norman, I'm gonna give you one point because I know you have a massive stash of stuff that's green and smelly and is probably yeah, gonna be in it, high man. demand even after the worst case scenario unfolds. Wait a minute, man. How did you find out about that? Are you the cops? Up next is geography. Where do you fall on this spectrum from zero to 10? Now, if you live in a high rise building in the center of a densely populated city with a population north of 1 million people, your baseline is going to be zero. Now, if you live in a suburb in a moderately sized city, less than 500,000 people, you can give yourself a five. If you live in a rural environment with lots of access to resources, low population density, and a good climate, you can give yourself a 10 out of 10. Some mitigating factors to consider here are things like population density, availability of resources, climate is gonna be a big factor. Can you survive where you live all year round? If you can, give yourself an extra point. Is your city or the place where you reside in going to be a nuclear target or is it in the path of nuclear fallout? You could take a few points off. Are you close to fresh drinking water and possible food sources? Now, going back to our case study, where does Normal C. Norman lie on this spectrum? 
From what I'm told, he still lives in his mother's basement. Yeah, man, my mom is awesome, you know. I, I mean, I'm still in the market for real estate. And However, his right reformed now, well, hippie mother has now, done fairly well for herself and currently right lives now, in a relatively right well-to-do suburban things. neighborhood in a medium-sized city with decent access to natural resources. So we're gonna cut him some slack. We're gonna give him a six out of 10. Six out of 10, far out, man. I like the number six. The next dimension is gardening and your ability to grow food. If you have no gardening experience and no garden, you can give yourself a zero out of 10. If you have some gardening experience or some garden, you can give yourself a five out of 10. If you have lots of gardening experience and you have a very large garden that you can survive off of, you can give yourself a 10 out of 10. Now, some mitigating factors to consider here are going to be, do you even have the space for gardening? Maybe you live in a suburban environment. You don't have a garden, but if you wanted to, you could have one. That's a lot different from somebody who doesn't have access to that space, who might live in an apartment or a high rise condo. Do you have the ability to irrigate those crops if it comes down to it? Do you live in an environment where you get ample amounts of precipitation that you can acquire through a rain catchment system or some other means in order to grow that food? Do you have seeds stored? Are you going to have the fertilizers and the pest control and all of the farm tools that are going to be required to procure food from the land indefinitely? If you check all those boxes, definitely give yourself a 10 out of 10. Now, in terms of normalcy Norman, I hear that he likes growing stuff. It's not always stuff that is edible. Well, at least not in that way. <coughs> oh, yeah, I know what you're talking about, wink, wink. Because he's actually a bit of a green thumb, we're gonna cut him some slack here. Norm, I'm gonna give you a seven out of 10. Seven out of 10? Yeah, I knew I was gonna prove my old man wrong someday. The next dimension is hunting and animal husbandry. Now it's all fine if you can grow your own vegetables. Unfortunately, you're gonna be limited in terms of the types of protein you can acquire through that method. Having the ability to raise your own livestock or hunt wild game is going to be absolutely critical to your survival. Now, if you've never fished or hunted or have any animal husbandry experience, go ahead and give yourself a zero out of 10. Now, if you have some experience hunting or fishing, but maybe you don't actively do it, but you could if you had to, Go on and give yourself a five out of 10. Now, if you are an experienced and active hunter or fisherman, and you currently raise animals, then you can go on and give yourself a 10 out of 10. Now, how do you determine where exactly you fall along the spectrum? Well, some other things to consider might be the following. What is your proximity to a potential hunting spot? Do you have access to places where you can acquire wild game? If you don't, even if you've had experience in the past, you might wanna take a point or two off. Maybe you have food preservation and butchering skills. You can go on and give yourself a point. Maybe you've raised chickens and rabbits, but never stepped it up to goats and cows. Obviously the payoff from those larger animals is gonna be much bigger, so you would give yourself a higher score. Now let's look at our specimen, Normal C. Norman. From what I'm told, he's a vegan. Unfortunately, he lives at latitudes where not a lot of vegetarian proteins can grow. Are you saying I got a bad latitude? Get it? <laughs> For that reason, sorry buddy, we're gonna have to give you a zero out of 10 on this one. Hey, don't you know there's lots of protein in hemp, man? The next dimension is a very broad one and hard to quantify, and that is skills. Do you have any practical skills that are gonna be of use to the rebuilding process during a grid down scenario? We're talking about things like carpentry, plumbing, electricians, first responders, medical practitioners, mechanics. These are just some of the trades that are gonna be invaluable when the lights go out. If you have no practical skills whatsoever and you can't even change a tire on your car, go on and give yourself a zero. Now a five out of 10 score here might be somebody who doesn't have any official certification in any given trade, but maybe is a bit of a DIYer. You make an attempt to fix things when you break down, or maybe you do have some education, but not a lot of real world experience. To get a 10 out of 10 on this skill dimension, you'd have to be somebody who has a lot of education and a lot of real world experience in your trade. Now, in the case of Normal C. Norman, he's been mooching off his parents and the government for a long time, so I'm guessing he doesn't have any sort of specialized trade. 
Well, in that respect, you are correct. Now, in spite of that, from what I'm told, he does dabble in pottery and glass blowing and other artistic endeavors like that. So I'm actually gonna give you a couple points in this category because you have some skills and you have the tools to use yeah, it. Yeah, look at that. That's art right there. Up next is security. If you have no firearms training, you've never fired a gun in your life, you have no self-defense training, you've never been in a combative role or a fight in your life, you can go on and give yourself a zero out of 10 in this category. Maybe you do have a firearms license, you might even own a gun, but you don't really have any comprehensive firearms training, you've never taken a self-defense course, but maybe you hit the punching bag every once in a while, go on and give yourself a five out of 10. Now, if you are somebody who has that comprehensive firearms training and you actually have combat experience, go on and give yourself a 10 out of 10. Now, this security category can be very broad. It's not all about firearms and self-defense. So even though you may lack the ability to handle firearms, there's other ways that you can redeem yourself in this category. Some other variables to consider are as follows. How many layers of defense do you have around your home? Give yourself a point if you have a good security system. Give yourself another point if you have good fencing. Maybe you have a guard dog or early warning detection systems. These are all things to consider. So, Norman. Huh? Are you talking to me? <sighs> because you have an innate aversion to firearms and self-defense in general, and you're a pacifist who doesn't believe in violence, unfortunately, I think you're gonna be a mark for marauders when the shit hits the fan. Oh, darn. All these things considered, Norman, I'm gonna have to give you a zero out of 10. Next up is physical fitness. If you're a person who has chronic health issues, some debilitating ailment, or you're morbidly obese, then unfortunately, you're gonna be a zero out of 10 in this category. That doesn't mean you can't improve, that just means that's how it is right now. Now let's say you do have some health issues and maybe you're a bit overweight, but these are things that you could change if you made the right lifestyle choices, then I would go on and give yourself a five out of 10 for this category. Now if you are an Olympic level athlete, you are young, you are physically fit and you have no chronic health conditions, go on and give yourself a 10 out of 10. Age is another factor to consider here. If you're 70 and above, you have to be realistic in your self-appraisal. You are not going to be as physically fit as a 20-year-old. So where does Norman fit on this scale? He is a millennial. As far as I know, he doesn't have any chronic health conditions. We know that he's probably not gonna be able to run too far because of self-inflicted <coughs> cardiovascular issues, we'll say. But on the whole, he's in relatively good health. And if he gave up some bad habits, I actually think he could be physically fit. You know what? He actually has a similar build to somebody I know. Whoa, is this his kind of trippy? Uh, are you my long lost brother, man? So we're gonna go on and actually give him a six out of 10 in this category. Dimension number eight, your network and community. Are you a lone wolf who lives by yourself and maybe you even have a lot of young toddlers or dependents? You might as well go on and give yourself a zero out of 10 in this category. Now, if you have a fairly strong nuclear family, but you don't find yourself a part of a mutual assistance group, a larger community on which you can rely, give yourself a five out of 10. Maybe you have a strong nuclear family, a large extended family, and you have a strong community that you can rely on and trust when times get bad, go on and give yourself a 10 out of 10. Basically, the determining factor here is going to be how many people can you rely on and can you trust, and how many of those people are going to be assets versus liabilities. Young children are awesome and can be a great motivator for you to want to endure even the worst of situations. However, in a life or death situation, they're gonna be fully dependent on you for their safety. Another way to perhaps self-assess with community is to look at it this way. If you have more than 10 able-bodied people that you can trust with your life and with your family, then I would give yourself a 10 out of 10. If you can only trust five people, Give yourself a five. If you have nobody that you can trust who is able-bodied and capable, I would go on and give yourself a zero out of 10 in this category. It's not too late to make some friends. Now, in terms of our case study, Norman, as far as I know, is very communistically oriented, we'll say. So he's fairly easy to get along with, fairly easy going. I'm a chill dude, man but isn't really a part of a greater mutual assistance group. So to be generous, we're gonna give him a three out of 10 here. Wait, what do you mean? My buddy Rodney up the road, he said I could sleep in his trailer anytime. 
Number nine is mental health. Now this is a difficult category to quantify. I would say that if you have a severe chemical dependency, be it alcohol or drugs, maybe you have some sort of immutable mental illness that is only treatable via medications, then unfortunately you have to give yourself a zero out of 10 in this category. Now if you've had some mental health issues in the past, maybe you're a recovering addict, currently you're stable. That's the most important thing. Go on and give yourself a five out of 10 in this category. Now, if you were somebody who's never had any mental health problems, never had any addictions problems, you're great at handling stress, you're highly motivated, and you have no psychological imbalances, then go on and give yourself a 10 out of 10. Now, it's certainly not my place to diagnose or classify where you fit along the spectrum of mental health. This is gonna be one of the most subjective dimensions for you to self-assess. So you're gonna to wanna to be honest with yourself. Now, in terms of normalcy, Norman, he's got an addiction problem. I think you've been lied to by the government. Weed's not addictive at all. But in terms of the hierarchy of substance abuse, the green stuff isn't quite as bad as something like crystal meth or cocaine. And as far as I know, he doesn't have any major mental health issues. I got a mind like a steel trap. The biggest strike against Norman is probably gonna be his lack of motivation. So for that reason, we're gonna give you a two out of 10. Yeah, I am more of an ideas guy. You got me there. Last but not least is finances and resourcefulness. Now it's arguable that not all these categories are gonna be weighted as equally. And if you were to devise the perfect algorithm, it might weight these variables differently. The reason why we left this category for last is because we wanted to make sure that people were not defining their survivability around how much money they have in the bank. There's a lot of other factors outside the size of your bank account that are going to dictate how well you fare in these conditions. Now, that said, if you have a lot of debt, you are an unskilled laborer, you are unemployed perhaps, or you're just a low income earner, you're gonna have to give yourself a zero out of 10 in this category. Now, if you're a person who has some debt and you're a moderate income earner, go ahead and give yourself a five out of 10. If you're a person who's a very high net worth individual, I'm talking north of $10 million. Back in the day, a millionaire used to mean something, which is why we set that bar so high with 10 million and above. Because if you have a net worth of over $10 million, chances are you have the resources that you're gonna need to get a really good head start. We're talking about a great bug out location loaded with all the prepper trimmings and an ample stockpile of food and resources. Now, whether you have the mental fortitude, the skills, the network, the physical capability to defend all that and hold it down, that's another question altogether. So let's say you're a person who has a net worth of around a million dollars. That's included the equity you have in your house and the other assets you have, maybe you have a little bit of money in the bank. I would go on and give yourself maybe a six or seven out of 10. Now let's take Norman for example. Well, he hasn't worked a job for a long time. He also doesn't have any debt because no credit card company would issue him a credit card. Actually, you know, you're right. The bank won't even give me a debit card. Would you believe that? If he was to get a job, it would likely be a low income job. and It would take him a long time to build up any sort of substantial nest egg. So we're gonna have to give Norman a two out of 10 in this category, because if he gets his crap together, he might be employable for a low skilled, low income job, so what, but he doesn't have any debt. So waste this precious life working for the man? And maybe if he gets motivated enough, he can sell his pots and paintings on Etsy. Selling pots? I think I can do that. So Normal C. Norman's survival score is 29 out of 100. And quite frankly, we were being very generous. 29 out of 100? Well, I'm having flashbacks to high school. So how did you guys do? Myself personally, I scored 74 out of 100. Now this might seem low, and maybe in some cases I was a bit more conservative in my estimations. Now ideally you would be scoring above 50%. If you scored above 80%, you're probably in the top five percentile of the population, okay? Now if you did score on the lower end, it's not the end of the world. In fact, it's great because that means you have a long journey of preparedness ahead of you. Hopefully this exercise helped you to identify places where you were deficient and places where you can actually make changes. There's gonna be certain factors here that you're not gonna be able to change. But the good thing is you can compensate by excelling in other areas. So in conclusion, you may have financial issues that are hard to overcome. You may have chronic health issues that might not get much better. 
But hopefully we've demonstrated today that there are things that you can do to improve your survivability if the absolute worst case scenario unfolds. Let me know your score in the comment section below and feel free to let us know is there any way you think this scale can be improved. We are currently working on an interactive questionnaire that's going to be leveraging artificial intelligence tools to help us effectively determine an individual's survivability score. For more on that, stay tuned. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Canadian Prepper Up. The best way to support this channel is to support yourself by gearing up at CanadianPreparedness.com, where you'll find high quality survival gear at the best prices, no junk, and no gimmicks. Use discount code Prepping Gear for 10% off. Don't forget the strong survive, but the prepared thrive. Stay safe.